Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about electron shells. Now you might remember, if you've seen another video that I've done on atoms and elements, that we said, and we'll start with a basic drawing, that we said in the centre of an atom you have a central nucleus. We're just going to draw one, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll just draw this nucleus in place and we'll just colour in a few of these. So just a very rough sketch of this. central nucleus and we said that the nucleus contained protons and also neutrons but we said that electrons were this uh, part of the atom this component that we found occupying shells around that particular nucleus so we're just going to talk a little bit about these electron shells so these shells and we're just going to draw perhaps three of these shells in place. So we've got one, two, three. Excuse the slightly off circles there, but we've got three of these electron shells in place. Now electron shells are sometimes called energy levels. So that's a crucial thing to just make a note of. So these electron shells are often referred to as energy levels. Now the lowest of these energy levels is the innermost shell, the shell closest to the nucleus. Now that is always filled first. We always fill up that shell and then we fill up the ones more peripheral to that. So the closest to the nucleus is the first shell, it's the lowest energy level shell if you like. And there's only a certain number of electrons are allowed in each shell. And there's a particular rule that we follow. So in the first shell we're allowed two, two electrons. In the second shell there are eight and in the third shell so this video is really aimed at uh, this is probably to the depth relevant to GCSE a level we'll go a little bit more technical in that particular video but in this third shell we also can have eight so these are the rules that we're going to adhere to when filling up these electron shells so one thing to know about atoms is that you're ideally looking to have one with a full electron shell. Like if you take the noble gases in the periodic table, all of the elements that you find within the column of the noble gases have full electron shells, full outer electron shells. But the thing is, in most atoms, in most atoms rather, the outer shell is actually not full. And what that means is that it wants to make that atom react with something to fill it. So it's most stable when you have a full outer shell. So let's just put some electrons in place. So we said that the first shell would have two. In fact, before I draw these on, what we can do is actually follow these rules to work out electronic structures. Now, usually in the GCSE specification, you need to know usually about the first 20 to 30 elements of the periodic table, how to draw their electronic arrangements. But if we follow this simple step, this rule, these rules of 288 that I've just given, then we can actually work these out. So if we look at hydrogen in the periodic table and it has a proton number of one, then that must mean there would be one electron. If we look at helium, two, that would be two electrons. Now, in this particular example, I've drawn a nucleus with five protons. Now, if we take the proton number as five, then that would refer to boron, B-O-R-O-N, on the periodic table. So we have hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron. So if the proton number is five, as per my previous video on atoms and elements, we have the same number of protons as we do electrons. So let's put in five electrons into this diagram. So we occupy the first shell, so we'll just draw these as purple circles. So let's put one here and one here. So we've got two electrons in place there. 
Now we need to fill up the next shell, so we need eight here. One, two, but as this is boron, three. So there we would have an atom of boron. So this would be an atom of the chemical element boron because we have five protons. So we've got five protons, but we also have five electrons. So there we've drawn an atom of boron. Now in this case, because we haven't got a full second, if we label this as the second shell, electron shell, or energy level, we wouldn't in a diagram necessarily need to show this one here, this third shell, because we'd want to complete the second shell first before showing this outermost third shell. But that is ultimately how this electron shell structure kind of works. You fill it up two in the innermost, eight, and then eight, and an atom is ideally looking for a full electron shell. So I've drawn boron here. If we were to fill this up, if I just draw in X's rather than uh, full circles, so we have three on this second one, so we could put a four, a five, a six, seven, eight. That would mean a second full shell. And then the third one, we to make that full, we would have another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we'd have a full third shell. And you can see how this would uh, proceed. So if we take another ex random example, let's take argon. Argon in the periodic table has a uh, structure where it has 18 protons. So it must therefore have 18 electrons. So you would fill in the first one with two. The second one would then have eight. The next one therefore would have eight. So two, eight, eight together would make 18. So it's really straightforward. So there we have a little bit about electron shells, also known as energy levels. The lowest energy level is the innermost one to the nucleus, and it's always filled first. We fill it with two electrons. The second shell around that would have eight. The third one has eight, and we're ideally looking for a full outer shell. Now, at GCSE Chemistry, as I said, you're only really looking at the first 20 elements, so we only really need to know this electron shell arrangement for this first 20. It gets a little bit more complicated after that, but I will have other videos to explain what to do in that particular situation. Okay, hope that helps.